My son got a new bed for his fourth birthday and I wanted to design a piece that complemented the frame's style. And since it's a modern style frame, I decided to build him a mid-century modern inspired nightstand, or side table, or whatever you prefer to call it. I have an eight inch joiner, but my boards for the tabletop are about nine and a half inches. So I removed the guard and ran the boards over the cutter head. Then I used some double sided tape to attach the newly jointed face to a piece of half inch ply and ran that board through the planer to flatten it. Then I removed the plywood and ran the board through the planer again with the freshly planed face down. This removes the remaining material that was not removed at the joiner and now the board has parallel faces and a square edge. From there I started ripping the boards down to their final width. This table doesn't have a ton of pieces to cut like some of my other projects so this went pretty quickly. But this maple is super hard and thick so I took my time in the cuts. One new addition to my setup is a vertical featherboard from MagSwitch. It helps hold the piece down and prevents it from kicking back up. Featherboards are excellent for helping hold pieces flush while you make the cuts. If you're interested in making this piece, the plans for this project are linked in the description below. So with my crosscut blade installed, I first cut one clean edge onto one side of all my legs. This ensures that both the top and bottoms of the legs are square to the face. The easiest way to do this is to either set up a stop on your miter gauge or crosscut slit, whichever you prefer. I'd love to hear which one you reach for in your shop, so let me know down in the comments. Here I went with the miter gauge, so I set the stop on my miter gauge and cut all the boards to their final length. With all my pieces cut out, I marked the domino placement on the two boards for the tabletop. These are less for structure and more for alignment of the board faces. So with those marked out, I plowed the mortises, then I could glue the boards together. Now, a little glue goes a long way, and I don't particularly appreciate having a massive amount of squeeze out to clean up. So I applied glue to one edge, then clamped the wood slices snugly together. If you're enjoying the video, please give it a like. It really does help a ton. I added a few calls to the setup to make sure the top stayed perfectly flat while the glue dried. The dominoes help the faces stay aligned, but that doesn't mean that the piece is actually gonna stay flat once the clamping pressure is added. And calls are just flat jointed boards that you can see here with packing tape on one side. Next, I marked the midpoint of the table legs and the bottom of the foot. Then I ripped a clean edge onto a piece of plywood to make a sled for the tapers. I then screwed in some reference pieces to hold the legs at my marked locations and screwed on a hold down clamp. I prefer making my own sleds for tapers rather than using a pre-made jig or something that I would have to store. Then I could cut the tapers, and then I rotated each piece 90 degrees before cutting again. With this design, I only need tapers on three of the faces. The fourth inner face stays flat. Make sure your hold down clamp supports are just under the height of your workpiece to get good clamping pressure. Oh, and whenever you're cutting tapers, watch out for pieces that might kick back or wedge themselves between the saw blade and the insert. I made a template for the stretcher transition and outlined it onto the maple blank. Then mark the placement for the domino that will reinforce the joint. I like to use a square piece of plywood to reference the domino against when making vertical plunges. And if you don't own a domino, this can also be done with dowels. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next build video. And thank you for your support. With the dominoes cut and the stretchers test fit together, I brought the chunk over to the bandsaw to rough cut to the line, removing as much material as I possibly could. Then I reattached the template with some double-sided tape and I used my router table with a flush trim bit to cut out the stretcher. This ultimate flush trim bit from Bits and Bits handled the hard maple with ease. However, it was a little intimidating with such a thin piece of wood, so go slow and let the bit do the work. Then I sanded the router marks clean and trimmed the ends to the final length of the table saw. To finish the edges of the legs, I use an eighth inch round over bit. It's little things like this that really bring the piece to the next level. I keep up with these projects as I build them by following my Instagram at Timber Biscuit Woodwork.
Once I had the placement for the dominoes marked out, I plunged the mortises and glued the stretchers together. If you want to see more complex domino joinery, check out my mid-century modern bookcase build linked in the card above. I had to do three separate glue ups for this piece to make sure everything dried square. This is another example of how dominoes strengthen the joint but still allow for some play. Clamping squares like this one from Rockler really help keep things in line. Once the glue was dry, I could finish surrounding over the joint and sand the joint flush. From there it was on to the second glue up, which went a lot like the first, only this time I had to ensure the leg stayed square both horizontally and vertically. And for the final glue up I moved over to the flat surface of my table saw and clamped the leg directly to it to hold everything perfectly square. I then sanded all the roundovers before getting started on the tabletop. I cut a test circle out and I used it to mark the location on the workpiece, and then over at the bandsaw, I cut it to its final dimension. One thing to watch out for is your domino placement within the panel. It's not a good day when you cut only to discover that that was your exact domino location. And if you don't have a bandsaw, you can cut the circle out with a router jig or jigsaw. However, a jigsaw will require more cleanup. I used a bowl bit for the snack tray to give a nice easing transition into the dish and round out the edge. My main pointer here would be to go slow and make multiple passes. These bowl bits tend to leave slight variances that will need to be sanded out later. The circle for the cup holder was created with a mortising bit set to the same depth as the phone tray. Finally, I added a chamfer at the router table to the tray side of the circle. Then the flip side got an eighth inch round over. Since this top is designed to be used on both sides, you can choose which side gets which treatment. After sanding the tops and edges, I masked off the tray with blue painter's tape. Then I applied two coats of primer and three coats of paint, sanding in between coats. This paint may not last forever, but that's okay. I can always go back and touch it up or remove it altogether. I'm not a professional painter, but I found that using long strokes does wonders to hide brush marks. And the paint I'm using here are just some samples my son picked out from Home Depot since only a small amount is needed. Any bleed out from the paint was easily removed with some 220 sandpaper. I'm using Rubio Monocoat for the finish since it's super durable and this table will definitely take some punishment. So I water popped the grain and wiped the whole piece down with mineral spirits before applying the finish. If you're looking to purchase any of the tools or items you've seen in this video, I'll have links in the description. Full disclosure, I do get a few pennies if you do buy, but I would never recommend anything that I don't use myself. And just a friendly reminder that the plans are down there too. When applying this finish, I like to use a white scotch bright pad, then wipe away any excess finish with a soft shop towel to avoid overfinishing the surface. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. And more importantly, my son loves it. This piece is something he can have forever, and hopefully he will. I make new videos all the time, so if you think I've earned it, please subscribe. And if you like this build, check out some of my other projects. I'll see you next time.